Ladies and gentlemen, joining me on the line, she is the sports director for We Are Iowa Local 5. Rena Garcia is on the line. Hey, Rena, it's been a while. It has. I can't believe it's been so long. We're already back talking about football and <laughs> all the goings on, but I'm excited. You know what's funny about it was I was thinking about it uh, the other day, and the Colorado story is what kind of set all this off where we should have known at this point in the in the year that we were getting ready to have one of those stories. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And it, you just knew it wasn't going to be long until there was kind of another break in this whole realignment saga. And so uh, the Big 12 out, out in front and making headlines once again. Can you imagine here in – once all this kind of settles down after everything, you know, figures itself out – what the documentary about that's going to be like. I, I feel like it's going to be one of those like epic five parters, <laughs> you know, it's going to yeah. be, I mean, there's no way you could like pack this into maybe like a two hour documentary. It, it, there's just so much that went into it. So much minutia that it would have to be one of those epic kind of five part documentaries that you are like, okay, I need to make an appointment to watch all of this. But it'll be fascinating to watch once it's happened. Well, anyways, the reason I have you on today is, of course, last week the news came out that Colorado is going to tuck tail and come back to the Big 12. Uh, things, <laughs> I'm making fun of them because it is funny that they only lasted out there about 12 years. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, the Pac-12 in trouble with some TV, not having the TV deal the way they think they should they've lost a couple teams of the big 10 um and now today it looks like coming up later this afternoon and just for everybody listening on the podcast version of this we are recording at about one o'clock central on uh tuesday the first arizona their board of regents is getting together day and it looks like they're going to be coming to the big 12 as well right yeah and i think this is probably one of the more interesting things to watch in this because of course you know it's based on all the reports, it does, like you said, Arizona is kind of a shoe in to be the next team to move to the Big 12, but there's also these kind of other questions about what happens to everybody else. So another big question this too is what's going to happen to Arizona State? They're also, you know, governed by the Arizona Board of Regents. And so that's kind of something interesting to watch too, of whether this is going to be kind of like a package deal, you know, mm-hmm. obviously those two schools are so connected or if they're going to do something similar to what UCLA did with Cal Berkeley in terms of having to pay provisions where, you know, Cal Berkeley had to stay back and UCLA uh, moved to the Big Ten. And so I'll be curious to see kind of how that part of it shakes out and then kind of what happens after that. There's been a lot of talk about um, Utah being the next uh, school to kind of move to the Big 12. So I'm just curious about all the other dominoes that will fall as a result of, you know, if it indeed happens that Arizona makes the move. I mean, you go back to when Oklahoma and Texas said they were leaving the Big 12, and I believe that was two summers ago. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it looked like the Big 12 was dying. But I mean, two years later, it is clearly the Pac-12 is the one that's going to die from this, right? That's what it looks like. And it's just so interesting, too, because, you know, when it was announced that OU and Texas were leaving the Big 12, everyone kind of thought that was going to be the Big 12. You know, what, what are they going to do? But, yeah. you know, they went ahead and so continuing to add new teams. And now, you know, I think Brett Yormark has, deserves a lot of credit for this because he has moved fast. I think he's been very open about his ambition yeah. to really take the Big 12 to the next level. And I think because he's moved so quickly on that and has kind of been about the action, so to speak, I think that's helped. And I think the Pac-12 hasn't done enough of that. And I think that's kind of what has caused the turmoil in their member schools is saying, hey, what's what's the plan? What are we going to do? We need an answer today, not uh, a tomorrow, the week, we'll see how it plays out. No, we want to know what's going to happen because the college landscape is just ever-changing. So, yeah, I, I think they are certainly in some trouble there. Uh, Rena Garcia from We Are Iowa Local 5. She's the sports director over there. Okay, so let's, say, let's play the what-if game. Let's say uh, it comes out that Arizona is going to move to the Big 12. What's the next mm-hmm. domino you see? Because you brought up the domino, and that's what it is. What do you think is the next thing that happens after? I think you know, Utah would probably make a lot of sense. I know there's a lot of talk of trying to get those those corner schools and trying to, trying to bring some of those rivalries into the Big 12. So you know BYU already being there, it would make sense, I think, for Utah to come over. Okay. And then, like I also mentioned, of, of Arizona State possibly coming with Arizona to bring that rivalry in. And I think one thing that was really interesting, too, is thinking about the international appeal. So, you know, the Big 12 
is going to be playing some games in Mexico, mm-hmm. um, I think starting in December. And so obviously with these schools being kind of, you know, Southwest corner schools, that can add to the international appeal, at least specifically when it comes to Mexico. So I think that may be, in my opinion, probably the next target, as opposed to maybe an Oregon or a Washington, because I know those were certainly on the table as well. But I would say probably keep an eye out maybe for Utah, possibly the next move. See, I'm waiting for, to me, it makes sense for Stanford and Oregon to go to the Big Ten. Mm -hmm. Like, I kind of feel like that's the, you know what, we're going to jump off this ship as soon as possible, and you're going to see the Big Ten pick up two more schools. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's. That's a good point to pick up. I don't. I don't think they're done either with their with their expansion, especially as if the Pac-12 continues to disintegrate, as we're seeing. I know. I think that's definitely a a good a good shout there. It does seem to be a little bit um, better fits. I think also for for the Big Ten as well. The other thing I was wondering about this: it, how how far away are we from these power conferences breaking away from the NCAA and telling them to kick rocks because we don't need you? Yeah, you know that's so interesting because it's just like I just feel like everything is changing so fast in college yeah. sports right now and I think maybe even five years ago we wouldn't have really given much thought to that no we think, ah, probably not going to happen but now it's like you can't rule that out just because of how things are changing so much and you know these conferences really are just get, becoming I mean there were already power five conferences but it's like they're just becoming super conferences at this point to where it almost seems like, yeah, they they are kind of becoming bigger than the, than the NCAA itself. So, you know, I <laughs> it's funny that it's just in the realm of conversation right now, just because you're right. That's just how powerful they have become with these huge TV deals and things like that. Um, so it's definitely something interesting to watch for sure. I mean, when's the last time you heard the NCAA do something good for one of these schools? Other, Because it's always, oh, we're taking away wins or we're taking away championships. Mm-hmm. They they only come in when there's a problem. Right. And it just seems like they're always in conflict, you know, especially when it comes to um, gambling and things like yeah. that or whether it's an IL. It always just seems like they almost present more roadblocks. Um, and then when they do finally get on the same page, it's like, but then there's even more issues that come up and it just seems like they can never really get on the same track to the point where you have to wonder if they're going to get tired of dealing with that. They want to do it their way. And if, you know, all the things are in place to do it, it wouldn't surprise me if someone floated that idea out there to say, Hey, can we do this on our own? Can we totally change this landscape and, you know, tell the NCAA to butt out of everything? I see. I go back to when COVID happened and, and this isn't the exact words, but the NCAA basically said you handle it for college football mm-hmm. that season. And I, yes, that is the the short, dirty version of you know what they said and all that. But I mean, that's essentially what it came down to. It was like you make the call. So it's like, well, why do we need you then? Yeah. If you're not going to yeah, be the governing it, body, what? Why do we need you? So their position just kind of seems unclear at times when it comes to things like that. And I think COVID is a great example. So I think. That, that lack of clarity of like, okay, what is your role? It, you know, do you only step in on certain situations? It does make it really confusing, especially when schools maybe try to be proactive, then the NCAA comes out with something else. It does make it really difficult to, you know, try and move forward as all these changes are happening. Rena Garcia on the line with me. She's sports director over at We Are Iowa Local 5. All right, so Rena, I'm going to put you on the spot here, okay? I want you to make okay. two predictions for me. Okay. What's your what's your prediction for the most likely next thing, and what is your prediction for the wildest thing that could happen before we start the next college football season? Oh, okay. So the most likely next thing. I mean, I guess think if, are we, if we're talking short term, I think the obvious. I think we are going to see that Arizona move. But I think the craziest thing, not so much crazy in that no one really saw it coming, but. I think we really could see the Pac-12 kind of fall apart if that TV deal does not happen. I don't know if we've really seen anything like that to a conference of that, you know, once allure that it had to kind of completely shatter into what it is now. Um, and, you know, what if all the, the rest of the member schools say, you know what, we got to jump ship. I mean, the, things are just falling apart so fast. So I think that might be – Although people probably saw the writing on the wall, I think that might be the craziest thing if it just kind of completely disintegrates. Uh, here's my other question about this, and I just kind of thought this up. You know, you saw, in, in using the perspective of when Oklahoma and Texas left the Big 12, everybody thought it was gone because that's your two big money teams, right? Right. Uh, they went out, they replaced it with four teams that really, 
if we're being completely honest, probably aren't the caliber in name wise of an Oklahoma and Texas. But they replaced them, and then they went out and got more with Colorado and most likely Arizona coming up, right? If the right. if the Pac, okay, so with all that set up, very wordy set up. If the Pac twelve was to save itself, is it going? Are there teams out there that can replace the names they've lost? I guess is the best way to say it. Like I'm looking at the Mountain West and. If you brought in a Boise State or, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Fresno State or something, is that going to be the caliber of team that you've lost? Yeah, I, honestly, they, they will be able to replace the caliber of names. I mean, there's just so many big time <laughs> players um, and, you know, international brands that people know. And so if you bring in, like you said, a Boise State or, you know, it's just like it, it really is hard to find a replacement to that that would be willing to come to the Pac-12 in a time of like there where there's so much instability. I think that's really going to be a challenge. And so I don't think they would really be able to get a school of that caliber until once they get that TV rights deal settled and they appear to kind of get on better ground, get their head above water, so to speak, because right now it just looks like they're in shambles. Many schools that would want to go into that situation. Rena Garcia from We Are Iowa Local 5, she's sports director over there. Uh, we'll let you get rolling. I appreciate all this. I mean, there's so much to cover in this. It, you kind of start asking questions, and then you go down the rabbit hole with it, you know? Yeah, and it just changes by the day. It's kind of almost hard to keep up with because it just keeps changing, and the developments are just so huge. <laughs> so you really got to keep refreshing your, your feed because at any moment, you know, and th- these moves are happening fast. So that's another thing that factors into it is, you know, you really gotta gotta keep an eye out for these announcements because they are coming. Well, that's why I wanted to say at the beginning of this when it was, hey, we're doing this at one o'clock on you know Tuesday the first. <laughs> it's like by the time you know someone listens to this, it may be obsolete. You know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's kind of what happened with with Colorado. There was the you know rumors how long time ago, and then they flared back up earlier um, last week, and then all of a sudden, bam, the announcement is there. It's done. And then they're coming in 2024. So, yeah, things are moving at an unprecedented uh, pace, for sure. Can you imagine Matt Campbell sitting there talking to Deion Sanders before a game? (laughs) That shot. I'm excited. I am excited. I can visualize the shot right now. (laughs) <laughs> and I, I will tell you, I'm, I'm excited for this. It definitely brings some more excitement to the Big 12, for sure. Hey, uh, real quick, what do you got coming up on the uh, news? Yeah, so we're definitely going to break down kind of this. Uh, obviously, we're going to be watching what happens next. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the World Cup and the U.S. kind of in the, on the struggle bus right now, even though they advanced. we got some, uh, of course, Iowa, Iowa State players on some award watch lists. So definitely some, some fun things to talk about. Perfect. Rena Garcia, thank you so much. Yes, thanks for having me.